Functions are an important part of any programming language, but they are very important in JavaScript because they have what's called first-class status. Now what that means is that we can create functions on the fly, we can assign them to variables, we can pass them to other functions. So basically functions are a type of data in JavaScript, and that allows us to do a lot of cool things with functions. Now what I have open here is the example from the try it section. So we're going to go through that first and then we will look at some of the uh, extra things that we can do with functions. Before we can use a function, we have to declare it. Uh, we use a function keyword and then that's followed by the name of the function. And then we have a set of parentheses, opening and closing parentheses. This is so that we can specify any parameters that we want for this function. Now parameters are special variables that are used inside of the function and we can pass values to these parameters so that we can use those values within our function. Uh, for example, the alert function that we saw in lesson two, we passed it a value and then we saw that value value being displayed in a dialog box. Well, it has its own parameter and we pass a value to that parameter and then the alert function does something with that value. So our get greeting function is going to do something with the value that's passed for these parameters. Now, whenever we name a parameter or a variable or a function, we want it to be at least somewhat meaningful to us. For example, we have get greeting for the name of this function. This is kind of specific as to what it's going to do. We know it's going to do something with the first name and last name that's going to be passed to it. So since it's called get greeting and we are getting a first name and a last name, we kind of know that it's going to uh, generate some type of greeting using this information. And last name and first name are very specific as to what type of data is going to be passed to this function. So there's no guesswork here. Greeting, you know, we are storing the greeting first before we return it back to the caller. Uh, the greeting uh, name is still fairly specific. We at least know that it's going to contain at least some type of greeting. And then we use the return keyword to return the value of greeting. So this function is going to return a value. Not all functions do. It's like the alert function does not return a value. But uh, in this case, get greeting is going to return a value. Now, after the parameters, we have a curly brace that opens and then closes at the end of the function. This is the body of the function. It's also called a block of code. So actually, this is a block of code that is the function's body. So in order to declare a function, we use the function keyword followed by the name, a set of parentheses that may contain parameters. They don't have to, but in this case, we do. And then uh, an opening and a closing curly brace for the code contained within the body. So that is a function declaration, and we have declared get greeting. So we can call get greeting whenever we want to within our code to get a greeting for the name that we pass to this function. So here we are doing that. We are creating a variable called message, and we are assigning it a value from calling get greeting and passing John Doe. So what this actually does is it calls this function. We are passing John for first name doe for last name. And so inside of the function, it creates a variable called greeting. And it uses the string literal, hello, comma, space. And then we concatenate the first name, and then another space, and then a last name, and then an exclamation point. So we are constructing our own string here to say, hello, John Doe, in the case of calling it in this case. So hello John Doe, and then we return that value. So whenever we call this function here, message is going to contain hello John Doe, and then we use this value inside of the alert function to show that within a dialog box. So just so that we can see this, oh, I need to add this script to the page here. A uh, visual web developer for Windows users is a very nice program. It, it's 
primarily for web developers. It is a free tool that you can download and use. Uh, it has a lot of tools that are very handy that you'll see a lot of. There's something called IntelliSense that you'll see a lot of. You'll see a window pop up every once in a while as I'm typing. And whenever I see that, I'll, I'll uh, explain that. But we can just drag and drop this script file into our body and automatically put that in there. So it, it's a really handy application to use for web development. Okay, so let's open this up in Internet Explorer. And here we see the dialog box saying, Hello, John Doe. Now, of course, if we change the values of whatever we are going to pass to get greeting, like let's put my name here. Of course, this is going to change the value of message because we are passing different values to get greeting. So whatever we pass here is what we are going to see in this dialog box. So that's the try it section. So let's start playing around with this code just to see what we can do with functions. Now the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my name and put it back to John Doe. Now we can create an anonymous function by removing this get greeting name here so that all that we would have is function and then the set of parameters and then the body of the function. This is an anonymous function and actually this causes an error depending upon what browser you load it into because JavaScript expects a function name after the function keyword here. But we can actually assign this to a variable and I'm just going to call it get greeting again. So what we have actually done here is we have created a value, a function value, and assigned it to get greeting. So now get greeting is a function and we can still execute it the same way because get this anonymous function now has a name of get greeting. Get greeting, get greeting is a function so we can call it as a function. So if we were going to call or, or see this in the browser again we would see that it behaves the same way. Now one thing I did add here is a semicolon because this is now an assignment statement and we are using function as a value I want to make sure that JavaScript doesn't do anything weird with the uh, semicolon insertion. So I am putting a semicolon after this bracket. Uh, some people do this but the majority of professional developers do do this so this is a good practice to get into. There isn't much of a difference from declaring a variable as we did before and then creating an anonymous function and assigning it to a variable. There is a slight technical difference, but we're not going to go into that. Um, something else that we can do, though, since functions are a value, we can actually return a function from a function. So let's do something like that. And uh, if you get confused with this, that's okay. Uh, because we're starting to get into some of the advanced things that functions can do. Now what I have done here first is I have uh, put in parentheses around this function here. And then I am using uh, two parentheses here to execute this function. Uh, a function is executed whenever you use the function's name followed by the parentheses here. Uh, so since we are executing this function, this function executes. Uh, that goes without saying, doesn't it? But if we removed these parentheses, parentheses here, we would actually be assigning uh, this get greeting function to the message variable. So we could actually use message as a function if we wanted to, because we are using get greeting as a value here as opposed to executing it. And that is uh, a difference that we need to remember, because as we start dealing with events, we are going to be dealing with functions as actual values to pass around. But we, what we are doing here is we are executing this function whenever JavaScript loads this code within its JavaScript engine. It will execute this function because we are calling it with this set of parentheses here. And if I just remove these outer parentheses, then we can actually see that here. We are calling it. So we would actually be executing this function. 
Now I put parentheses around it because this is a nice visual cue so that we can see that, hey, something different's going on here. We don't usually have a parentheses here, so we know that we are executing something. Now, since we are executing this function, we've kind of broken our code. So what we actually want to do is return what was originally the function that was get greeting. So I'm just going to add function. This isn't going to accept any parameters. It's just going to return this function for us. And we also need to match that here. We need to put a semicolon here, and we just need to put the return statement here. So, what we have now, uh, tab over, let's tab everything, format it all nice. So, what we have now is a function that executes. It's called a self-executing function. Uh, if we can get rid of this internal function, we can see that here. So we have a function here that is executing because we are executing it by using the open and close parentheses. And inside of it, it's returning a function to get greeting here. So we are executing this function. We are returning this function here, which is get greeting to this variable. And then we can call it just like we have done before with get greeting here. So if I go back and refresh the page, we can see that once again, we are getting our alert dialog box with hello, John Doe. So we can use functions just like any other type of variables. It takes a little bit getting used to because usually you think of a function as doing something that it's its own entity. Well, it still is but it's also a value that we can pass around and do a lot of things with and we are going to see this uh, type of pattern later on whenever we are dealing with events in different browsers so that is functions in lesson three i hope i didn't confuse you too much with uh, what we did here but uh, it's something that uh, we will use later on in the book